Welcome. Welcome back. Today we're going to do a kind of old school fly. Kind of been on a trend of that lately just because there's a lot of new tires and a lot of people are discovering old stuff anyway. But uh, it's a really easy fly to tie. It's super fun. Super fishy fly. Super fishy. They're back in the day before we started articulating stuff, uh, if you go back and look at Modern Streamers 1, uh, the, the Conehead Barely, or the co, co, excuse me, the Conehead Marabou Muddler was probably in the top three fish flies for us. I mean, we, we fished it all the time. We did it, you know, size twos. So we were kind of big, but like the one we're going to tie today, but it was just, just flashy. It, it was just a fishy fly. You should try it. I mean, it's super, super easy to tie, super easy to fish. There's not much to it because it's a single hook fly and it's just the Marabou. So you can just strip it and it's, it's just a pretty easy fly to fish. Uh, go through the stuff here. I'm going to use a, <clears throat> I'm going to use a TMC. Uh, this is a 5263. I got the U series hook here too. Uh, doesn't really matter. A two three a three X long two. This is the U series. It's the you know the same thing. It's a 301, but it's a basically the same hook but in an economy version. More of them, less money. You can use any. 3x 4x long you know hook you want that don't go below a 3x because when you if you if you take the cone away you'd be all right but if you if you put the cone on there you're just gonna not gonna have much room left to build a fly out of it so try to keep it in the three or four x long so for tail i'm gonna use uh just these quills and you know i looked online when uh some of these earlier and almost everybody i see uses uh, feather now he uses some sort of either a strung schloppen or or you know whatever red they've got i i just in the old days I mean, the first ones i saw joe brooks were always in this thing i'm going to do it that way they're cheaper i mean you can get and and it, it just classic older flies a lot of them you'll see have a red tail of some sort so just kind of cool i'm gonna use some hollow braid uh this is a really cool material this uh, kind of went away for a while. And this is, became, we got it back. I also use this, not, uh, I use two strands in the, on my uh, antacid. This is a, for the underwing. So it's got a multi-use, but you can use this flat braid for any body you want, for any, any streamer that's got a gold uh, body on it. And by the way, I, I did this fly in white and yellow. Pretty much that was the colors I did it in. If I go to the white, then I just put a silver cone on. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned that, but we're, I'm using a large brass cone. If you if you want to use tungsten, if you want it, whatever you want to use, that's fine. It's just this is kind of the early days. Uh, for the wing, I'm going to use yellow marabou. This is actually this is yellow marabou here. You can see the difference in the color. One's just a little richer. Uh, it doesn't really matter if you got yellow marabou. That's great. I'm going to use this sunburst because I just like the color of it. Over the top of that, I'm going to have some peacock hurl. Rather use an eye, a sword, whatever, just as long as it's got enough. Like on these swords, you get a lot of, or these uh, eyes, I mean, you get a lot of the side. Get some shorter ones up here, you can see. Get some shorter stuff. Some wet flies, or even the, these work fine on the top too. I'm just going to use just some hurls sitting around here. So, I've got the, the hook on, I've got the, I've got the cone on it. Sometimes with these, especially when you get into the three, the size, this is a size two on these traditional hooks they're going to have a pretty big uh, barb on them i had to pinch this down just a little a lot of places you have to fish barbless anyway i didn't pinch mine down to barbless I, I pinched it so it was just barely enough you know so it catch a little bit but it's not really that big of a it's not really that big of a barb now just so i could get that on so i'm going to start this back here just like always i'm not going to i'm going to run my body pretty much up into this and you'll see uh, in a minute, we're going to run the body up. And it's just so when I put the head on, uh, I run it a little further up than I need to, just so I, just when I'm tying it, I don't ever have a gap back there. So we're just gonna get this back to, where my scissors go? Get in here. We're gonna take this quill. And by the way, when you tie in a quill, <laughs> You're gonna tie this in, it's gonna look really pretty. It's gonna sit back there, you're gonna cast it about three times. It's gonna end up looking like that hackle anyway. So there's really no advantage to these, these quills. They look good when you first put them on, they look kind of cute, but uh, when by the time you cast it, fish it, catch a fish or two, all these are gonna be all broke apart and just pieces anyway. 
So I'm going to take this, I'm going to set it right on the side, right here. I'm going to come over, pinch wrap, one tight turn down. There's my, I'm going to tie that in. I'm going to let it run all the way up here just to, sorry, I forgot to cut those ends off. I don't like those ends in there. Forgot to cut those off. Just going to cover that up. I'm going to go all the way back to the front. I'm going to take this hollow braid. This is a really cool uh, material container. It's super easy to work with. It takes, it pops that off of there and you've got an easy, so it doesn't come on, uh, it just doesn't come undone in your box. It's, it's super convenient. I, I've had that thing for probably three years. It's still, everyone's still intact. It's pretty hard to come by because most of those materials go crazy. So running this up, just, I'm only running this up here just for build myself a little bit of bulk. You're going to see a lot of people uh, in the videos, if you watch other videos about this, a lot of people put some, you know, maybe 10 turns of 025 or some other weight on there. I, you know, this is a lot, this is plenty of weight for me. And besides, I usually use a sinking line, but it's, I, I don't really need this fly to be heavy. So I'm going to just hold this back, wrap right back over top of everything here, getting a nice clean body. I'm going to drop this so that the, I'm not quite there yet right to where the gouge goes up. I'm already started to mess up with my, my uh, tail there. Should have been on top too, by the way. I let it roll over to the side, but we'll live with it for a minute. So I'm gonna take this, this hollow braid. I'm gonna put this first turn in here. I'm gonna pull it nice and tight. Then I'm just gonna wrap this forward about every fourth or fifth time. I, I just make sure it's nice and tight. I'm going to come up to the front and drop it back a little bit. Just build a little bit of a taper about to the halfway point and just come back. Just a tiny bit of taper. Take that right underneath the eye. Don't want, don't want, build too much build up in here. It doesn't matter. You're going to cover it all up, but just for the sake of tying things in. Oh, that tail's driving me crazy. That should be on top. It shouldn't be on the side. Okay. Um, I'm going to take these this is going to be at least two marabou plumes. You want a nice thick, nice thick wing here. And this fly, it, it's truly one of the most indestructible flies on the planet. Bob gave me one, my co-author Modern Strews gave me one once. It was so beat up. I mean, it, all that was left was a little bit of deer. This hair was everywhere. And I think there was a half of one of these things, hey, and they still ate the thing. I don't know what they saw it for, but... It was one of those days where they just were climbing on these things. Get up there. So I'm going to take this. I may have told you a hundred times, don't put that in your mouth. Keep your sponge. I forgot to put the sponge down. Take this, and I want it to be, I like to go about the hook length, and then maybe, I like it to stand back, you know, maybe three quarters of the bottom. I just look at it. I just look at it and say, yeah, that's about where I like it. That's good right there. I like it to sit past the tails. Maybe twice the twice as far as the tails are. Tie that in. Just give it a pinch wrap. Keep it on top. Just wrap forward. Come right back. Give it another one. I like to I like to stack these. When I put them in, I like to have the best plume on top. And so I don't. If you've got a compromised feather in any way, like this one's a little bit. You can see the dice. You know, it's still got a little bit of the quill on there. The, the I just, I look for a really nice one on top. The reason you do that is not, not only for the fishability, but if you tie in your fly and if it doesn't look right and you don't sort these and you tie a crap feather on the top, that fly will sit in your fly box forever. You'll grab the one, you'll grab the fly that looks best to your eye. So if you do your best to make them all look the best, they, you won't have one that you tie or you fish constantly, another one's sitting rust in your box. <clears throat> it's amazing to me, Johnny and I, Jeremy and I, everybody, whoever was fishing together, that's a crap one too. And like I say all the time, you gotta sort this stuff. If you're lucky, you get 30% drop. Sometimes it's 50. But we were talking about this, we're fishing down in the white. You reach into your fly box, at least the three of us, You'll grab a fly you think's brand new and you pull it out and it'll still have a knot on the end of it where you used it last time. You can do the same fly in that box, reach in, you can have 
I mean, I might have 20, you know, whatever fly it is, 20 of a color and reach in and grab the same fly, I'll have that knot on every time. Your eye goes to a fly that you like the looks of. So finish them off nice. So just stack this one right on top of the other one. I always, always put two plumes on these flies. I never put a single on. So we're gonna pull that right down, let it go right up underneath the, right underneath here, it'll help you. Whoops, slid off there. Get back there, had a little build up. Drop that. Now we're gonna put these, there's no set number of these. I usually put three or four of these on top. It's just an accent. Uh, this thing is, this is really old, beat up peacock. But it doesn't, I don't seem to be able to use this up. I've been using this thing forever. Dropped half of it in my lap. So I'm gonna take these, just get them this, roughly the same length. It's not a, again, this is more of a, this is just, it's an accent down the top. They're gonna get wet and they're all gonna stick together. So just get them about the same length. You know, I like it to stick just a little bit, just a little bit longer than the overall wing. Tie it in, just look at it. Really doesn't mean anything at all. Well, it does. It means it looks good. So there's your, when it's, it's just an accent. Now just put a whip on that. And we're going to take some, this is just, this is just regular marabou, or marabou, regular deer hair. Uh, you don't use a lot of this. We're going to tie in the collar. And then it's not going to have a lot of head. It's not like it's building a big shaped head or anything like that. It's just going to be, we're going to trim it down next to nothing anyway. And so I still, but I still like to have a nice collar. So I'm going to reach in here. This is kind of fine here. If this is, this, this particular fly, it's a good place, I think, to use. If you've got compromised hair, you know, it's not all, this is really, really good, clean, thin hair. If you've got some older stuff, because of the way, other than the collar, there's not much left of it. So it's a good place to, if you are uh, got some that you want to get rid of that's not the best. It's a good place to get it. Get rid of it. Because it's there's just not much hair. You're not, it's pretty much packed in behind this thing, so you're good there. I'm going to stack this hair. Just get a oh, bad pull. Bad pull. I didn't have enough of that anyway. I had the wrong stacker anyway. We'll redo that one. I'll make Johnny cut that so you don't see I ever did that. It's not true. It's nothing he likes better than to make sure that if I make a mistake, you see it. And that's why he gets picked on. And he deserves it. Oh, <laughs> mad dog. <laughs> what was that about? Quiet on the set. Trying to be a star here. Okay. We're back from the dog attack on the UPS guy. So we're gonna stack this hair, pretty nice clump of it, you know, about a pencil width or so. I like, I like just like with all my collars, I like it to sit on top. I don't want it to go all the way around. I see people tie their collars in all the way around, you know, it, that's a personal thing. However you do it, there's no such thing as right. You know, if it, if it doesn't hurt the way it fishes, it's perfect, it's what you like the looks of. So I'm going to tie this in. I want, I'm going to do it about a third of the length of the, from putting my thumb, let me get this out of the way. When I put this on the eye of the hook, is that out of the way? Yep, I'm rotating towards you. Rotate towards you me. Okay. When I put that on, I want it about one third, you know, of the overall body of the hook. And so, but that's just a, that's just a rough, whatever, 
if you want to do half, you want to do a quarter. It's, it's, it's just however you like to do it. So, and I like mine just like I do all of them. I like it to be halfway around the body. I like it just to wrap around and then see the underbody. So I'm going to tie this on top. And, and by the way, this is one where if you wanted to use, I'm always saying don't use the hair uh, from the collar because it's going to force, it, it wants to go backwards. You could use your hair as part of your head on this particular fly because it gets jammed between the cone when you do this head. It gets jammed between there so tight that it pushes it back and you wouldn't have any problem with it going forward. But I, I do my collars like I do my collars. So uh, one turn and I've got a nice, I've got it pinched really hard between my thumb and my forefinger so it can't go around the hook. So I'm gonna keep it at the halfway. As soon as that disappears, I put my second one in, do a single pull. You can see all those hairs right there. And we can just go right through them, nice and tight. Now I got a nice beefy collar. You can see, I'm gonna move it a little bit, maybe you can see even better. Oh, I'm gonna move it back because Jeremy just groaned because I took it out of focus. Okay, is that better? Yep. All right, so you can see it's halfway around. You know, it's just, it's supposed to be, I guess it's a muddler. I guess it's supposed to be a sculpin, but you don't see me sculpin with bright, shiny noses. But anyway, it's, that's the collar. It's right on top, and now I'm going to do I'm going to do one spin in here, uh, one pretty good spin, and just see if it if it's enough. It, again, it's got to it's got to push that head forward. It's got to be nice and tight. And if there's not, if I don't have enough, I'm a little bit further back than I need to be, maybe just a little bit. But so I'm going to take a pretty good chunk of deer hair here, clean it all out. <clears throat> Knock the tips off of that. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to set this right on top. And I want, so, and because we're fighting this cone now, things are getting, it's going to be more difficult than it would normally. So I'm going to put a one pull and letting the thread start to move around. I'm trying to get the hair to move around the, the cone. So I got one, two, and I'm going to let this, I'm going to make sure your cone's forward. I'm letting it work around just a little bit and you can see my threads disappearing and I haven't let it start to spin yet. It's really, you can see if you look underneath there that the cone's kind of wedged down. That's fighting. You see how I pushed it up right there? If you reach in and you just push that cone up, because when I started it was down like that. If you go like that, it'll go inside it easier when you, when you start to spin. So now I'm just going to spin that. I pulled it once so it's nice and clean. I could probably, I could pro I like that, I don't like that cone to be moving around. It's nice and clean, I've got plenty of hair in there, but I'm going to just show you what you could do if it was, if your head's loose on those things. This one's, this one's perfect. It's j exactly where it belongs. You don't need to put anything else. It's not moving around. You know, I've, I've got a nice, it's splayed out. But if you, if it's a little loose on your first one or two you do, just take this, just take a little bit of hair. It doesn't, you don't, you can do this all over it if you had to. If, yours, if your gap was at the bottom, do it there. But you just simply put it right where your problem is and pull right down into it. Just let it go right behind and pull it right in, right? Mine, so I just cut it on purpose because it's, I don't need it in there. <clears throat> but if you, if it's loose, just take a little stick, just like you would stack the collar or anything else if you're stacking. Just bring it in there. Most common, I see it, it's the bottom seems to be loose on them. I just tip it over and put one in there. Now, there's there's a technique that uh, I like to, I just whip finish mine right, right here, but like that, and whip it off right there. But because I can't see that, and you don't really know, just if you want some security on these, if you take a just a little bit of zap and run it, just run a couple drops. Woo, don't do it on your leg. That was a big drop. That's the thin set right there. So it's a little faster. So you just put the drops on there. I saw Dave Whitlock do this many times. He's, he just wraps it around. I don't even know if he knots his. You wrap it around and then just pull and let it, let it get tight. And you don't, you, you don't have to knot. You're, just, you're done. It, it's super easy. So now we're going to take a razor blade. I love this fly. So we're going to flatten this off on the bottom. I always, I, I like the bottoms of my flies to be flat. 
and I don't want to have any of that hair. I don't want it to cover up my underbody, that shine. And now, unlike the sculpin heads and the cougars and the dungeons and all that kind of stuff, on these, you just kind of follow the tape or the cone. Just go up, just, and that's why, that's why if you wanted to use the collar as part of your head, because the way it's wedged up against this, it'll, it'll go back. And we're not really doing anything. We're just kind of trimming back, giving it a... <clears throat> We're just getting that stuff out of the way. Just follow the, follow, just lay the blade right against the, the cone and just follow back and go into your collar. Just keep trimming it up. <clears throat> Get a nice flat bottom here. I like to come in here and make sure there's nothing. I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna flatten this out. I don't wanna see anything but body. I like to have that flat spot right there then I'll trim the rest of this all out. But I, I want to see this gold on the bottom and hair there. And then just take your blade and follow right there. You can do that with your scissors, it wouldn't, you know, whatever you like to do. Beautiful. We'll be done with it. I could use a little bit more trimming. I, I won't bore you with that. Um, you can see the ones right there. They're just a, these are a little bit long. I'm not going to finish it out. I'm just going to. You can see what we're looking for right there. So it's super easy. It's fast, fast fly. You got the marabou. You got your little tail down there. This will all be up on top when it gets wet, and everything will be beautiful. So that is the conehead version of the marabou muddler. This fly, uh, originally done, was there was no cone head. It's a great fly if you do it that style too, uh, but just you know, just without the cone. But it's a super fishy fly, super easy. Bass love this thing, by the way. I've caught a ton of bass on this fly, and just trim it out the way you like. Uh, it's not very complicated, and it, it'll catch you a lot of fish. Hope you like it. Hope it helps you out.